From the heartland of America to every nation on Earth, this is Jack Van Empey Presents The Truth in News and Commentary. Here now are Doctors Jack and Rexella Van Empey. Hello and welcome to Jack Van Empey Presents. Once again, it is a privilege for us to come into your home. And we are so delighted that Jack has done great research in order to explain the global headlines to us. So much is happening, as we all know, around the world. And it's good to know what the Bible says is really happening. This first headline, Egyptian president says Muslim Brotherhood is godfather of global terrorism. Woo. And then in Nigeria, nearly 200 Christian churches destroyed in violence. I'm going to go a little bit farther than that. 300 churches in Iraq alone. That's 500 churches, friends, destroyed. And then ISIS to Islamic brothers residing in America kill U.S. military personnel. Well, we are told that they do have the names of some of those, and they had them on a list, but uh, they're trying to do away with that list now so that they don't know where they really are. You know, Jack has often spoke about something that I'm going to show you right now on the screen, the return of our Lord, very, very near. I love this picture. Jack, this is beautiful, in love with the return of Jesus. I want to ask our friends a question. How many people do you know that are not in love with that? They're not really looking for the return of the Lord, even though they say they're Christians. Now, Jack, will you explain that to me? Why some say, oh, uh, I, I'm not really looking forward to it yet. Maybe it'll be 10 years down the road. Why do you think Because that they're living like Laodiceans, lukewarm, to the point where God says, you make me want to spit you out of my mouth and vomit. That's what God thinks about it. And I have so many Christians write me say, even my love is, oh, they go to church, but they don't want to hear this talk about the coming of Jesus. Why not? It's in the Word of God. It covers 10,385 verses. If you were going to talk about Christ's return as a pastor, you would have to preach on it every fourth week, one out of every four verses about it. And what's wrong with you Christians? Here's what happens when we're called up. Come up hither, Revelation 4.1. We shall see his face. Revelation 22.3. And I like what old Martin Luther, the great German reformer said. And I, I haven't even gone this far. He said, if you don't desire the return of Jesus, don't even call yourself a Christian because you're not one. Thank you, Martin Luther. Let's go on. Honey. Oh, yes, we will here. Do you know Dr. Billy Graham, of course? Well, his son, Franklin Graham, is well known for his work over in the Sudan. It's called Samaritan's Purse for giving to the poor, for helping with the hospital over there and all the rest. And he's witnessed the Islamic practices throughout the Middle East. And, uh, you know, he's expressed his thoughts openly. I'd like for you to see this headline as to what he had to say. Graham, disinvited from prayer event over Islam comments. Now, he, he really had to let his heart out and say what he really thought was going on. And they said, you can't come to the prayer event then and say anything because he gave the truth about that. Now, we're going to go on to somebody else who spoke the truth about Islam long ago, and it is Winston Churchill. This is what he had to say. Did you know that it went way back then? Islam, no stronger retrograde, decadent force exists in the world. Woo, let's take that first word there, retrograde. That is a very, very strong word, Oh, friends. Churchill. Yes, I'm going to ask Jack if he will tell us, what does that exactly mean, retrograde? Degenerate, as low as you can get. All right. Thank you, Mr. Churchill. All right. And then he also says that other yes, word. Yes, decadent. Decadent, yeah. Now, let me tell you what this was all about. You know, the president wanted Franklin Graham removed from the day of prayer, and Graham was the head of it. But he sent the military. He never takes the blame for anything. 
And so they said, you cannot be at that prayer meeting. You cannot speak. You cannot pray because you said that Islam was an evil religion. Imagine, they just killed 3,000 human beings. I call that decadent. I call that degenerate. For Pete's sake, what's wrong with people today? You know, we've got people doing everything. I've got this little Boston bomber, and he's on trial, and the girls say, oh, don't do anything to him, he's cute. Listen, there are people who can't walk anymore, can't see, can't hear, and many of their kids are in graves because of these two rotten brothers. I call them decadent and degenerate, and it's a shame that we even have to have trials for them. And Rexella, I want to say this right now. It's because our preachers and priests don't know anything about their Bibles. Oh, Exodus 20, verse 13, thou shalt not kill for against capital punishment. Hey, preacher, hey, priest, turn the page. 21, 12, he that smites a man shall be put to death. That's God's command. And Leviticus 24, 17 says, he that kills a man shall surely be put to death. And that includes that little cute guy there in Boston who said, oh, my brother uh, led me into it. But the Bible says in John 8, 44, you are of your father, the devil, and the lusts of your father will you do. He was a murderer from the beginning, Cain and Abel. And he's a liar and the father of liars. And God help us. We need an old-fashioned revival where Christians again start practicing their Bible. You can commit any sin there is now. You can go out and commit all kinds of adultery. In fact, you know there are two ethnic groups now. And get this, 72% of them have illegitimate babies. And you won't see the inside of heaven. And some of you preachers aren't telling them that. Ooh, Jack, that is so strong. But the Bible tells us how God wants us to live. Now, we're going to go on here with something else, that word decadent. I want to show you a picture. Khalid Sheikh Mohammed is accused of planning 9-11 attacks. Now, he said, if I could get out, I would do it again. This, I think, expresses how they want to take over the world. And I'm going to ask Jack about that. Uh, doesn't that express their desire to take over the world? Rexella, this man is so brutal that he cut off the head of Daniel Pearl, the Jew, and he said, if you don't believe I did it, look it up on the Internet. I'm holding him up by the hair in my hand. What brutality, what degradation, what rottenness. And I'm going to tell you something. This is the guy who wrote the book Mastermind was behind the 19 men, all these Arabs, 19 of them, who killed these 3,000 people. And this guy is the type that our president just released from Guantanamo. Five more murderers are going to come back to America and try to get us all for a deserter. What? Is this country coming to? Yes. And here is our military, because our president, the commander in chief, saying, You can't pray at the day of prayer. Mr. Graham, what is going on in this nation? We need a Holy Ghost revival. We need Christians to really be Christians. But I'm going to say this one more thing. This man said, I was with the 19 the night before, they bombed the Twin Towers. And they actually believed they were going to get 72 virgins for it. So they went to the stores and got all the perfume and said, we're going to throw this all over our clothes. And when the plane goes down, we're with those 72 girls for all eternity. You rewarded with lust. I think that's a degradation too. Here is the difference between Islam and Christianity. Islam says, thou shalt. Christianity says, thou shalt not. Islam, thou shalt kill your daughter if she has premarital sex. Thou shalt kill all homosexuals, and there'll be no same-sex marriage when we take over, they say. Thirdly, thou shalt kill all apostates. That's our own in the faith, who say one word against Muhammad, the Quran, or Allah. And thou shalt kill all infidels. That's anyone in any other religion except Islam. Christianity, thou shalt not. Let's think of the commandments. Exodus 20, 13 to 17. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not steal. 
thou shalt not bear false witness lie, and thou shalt not covet. And that's what ISIS is doing now. They're going into all the homes and taking all the possessions and making the money. Covetousness. And I'll tell you, they're going to answer to God one of these days. Now, remember this. This is what Jesus taught. Love your neighbor as yourself. You find that six times. Hereby know you that you're my disciples because you have love one for another. John 13, 35. Now I challenge you to find this in your holy books. And this is Jesus, tender Jesus. And he said in Luke 6, 27, love your enemies. Do good to them that hate you. Bless them that curse you. And pray for them which despitefully use you. You can't tell them that. Not running around with your hatchets, machetes, and swords. Oh, my Dick. So opposite. Can you <laughs> see how the two religions are so opposite? Well, you know, in March, Franklin Graham spoke of our president, uh, actually in his reactions toward Christians. I'd like for you to take a look at this next headline, if you would, please. Franklin Graham, new Obama danger for Christians. Ooh, what is that danger? Let's go on and see what this has to say. Globally known evangelist Franklin Graham says President Obama is so sympathetic to those of the Muslim faith, he's actually endangering Jews and Christians, opening the door for them to be persecuted where? In the United States. There are Muslims that have access to him in the White House, he went on, see, BN reported. Our foreign policy has a lot of influence now for Muslims. We see the Prime Minister of Israel being snubbed by the President and by the White House and by the Democrats. And it's because of the influence of Islam. They hate Israel. And they hate Christians. And so the storm is coming, I believe. And going on, here you see it, nearly 200 Christian churches destroyed in surge of violence. All right, Iraqi Christians, why? Why will no one speak out for us? Oh, my heart goes out to them. I haven't heard anybody really speak up, have you, in our the White House? Temple Mount Preacher urges ISIS to trample U.S. and destroy Israel. Can Israel rely on Obama and the anti-Israel president? Wall Street my, Journal oh my, said yes, it. Yes, that is. And here again, Palestinians confirm U.S. studying abandoning Israel at the United Nations. Not just Jews, Christians under increasing attack in Europe. Now, there are two, two categories here, friends, the Christians and the Jews, Israel. I want to take, first of all, the Christians. Why are they hated so much? 300 churches blown up in Iraq, none of them are left. And then also 200 there that we just mentioned. Jack, there are 500 churches just in those two countries. Why are Christians hated so much right now? The reason they hate the Christians so much is because they hate the Christ of Christianity and the Christ who died on the cross. The first thing they want to do is smash every cross because it reminds them of what Jesus did. And yet they say, he's our prophet. Why are you killing all these Christians then if you love this Jesus that they have received in their heart as a personal savior? Something's wrong with your thinking. And here's why all the world hates the cross if they hate it. 1 Corinthians 1.18, the preaching of the cross is to them that perish, perish. Go, the ones who are going to hell, foolishness, but unto us which are saved, that's the power of God unto salvation. And what about the Jew? Our present others so hate these precious people. First Chronicles 21, 1 Chronicles 21.1, Satan, that slimy old devil, Satan, stood against the Jew, stood against Israel. And they've been through it, and they're going to get more of it. Jeremiah 30, verse 7, Alas, for that day is great, so that none is like it. It's the time of Jacob's trouble, terrible suffering for Jacob, and Jacob is... Israel, 2 Kings 17, 34. We've already said that Satan stood against Israel. He hates the Jew. 
Why? Because Yahweh God in heaven, the Father, who created this whole world, so loved the Jew. You see, he said in Deuteronomy 7, verses 7 and 8, I did not set my love upon you because you were more in number than any other people, because you were the fewest, but because I, Yahweh God, loved you. Now, we're going to get a little intimate here with God's love affair for these precious people. He said to them, you are my chosen as well. You are my elect. That's Isaiah 42, 1, 45, 4, 65, verses 9 and 22. But, oh, this is really intimate. You are my sweetheart, Israel, yes. My betrothed, my fiance, Hosea 2, 19. And you are my wife, Jeremiah 3, 14. A guy wrote me once and said, that's not fair. God loves the Jew for everything, even causing him a wife. I said, what are you complaining about? We are Christ's bride, Revelation 19, 7. God loves the Jew and the Christian, and you guys that are slaughtering him are going to someday stand before him, and he's going to look you in the face and say, Depart from me, you cursed into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels, Matthew 25, 41. No 72 virgins in perfume. You know, Jack, uh, I've noticed there so very, very emphatically around the world, Christians are hated and Jews are hated. That's a prophecy, isn't it, that points to the return of the Lord. Before I come back, Christians are going to be hated. Israel is going to be hated. Is that right? Oh, yes. That's Jesus in Matthew 24, verse 9. He's speaking to his people, the Jews, and to the ones who've become Christians, his apostles. He said, you shall be hated of all nations. Yes for my name's sake. He went a little further and said in John 16 too, the time will come that whosoever kills you will think he's doing God a favor. And believe me, that's Islam from the word go. Absolutely. Now, while the White House, I'm so sorry about this, isolates Christians, and they are, Obama seems to give an open door to Islam. Take a look, please. Reverend Franklin Graham, Obama gives Islam a free pass. Franklin Graham uh, has this to say about some administration officials that are anti-Christ. And I'm going to read a little bit of this for you. Some of the people working in the Obama administration and in the White House are trying to completely secularize our military and are hostile to Christians to the point that they are anti-Christ in what they say and in what they do said Christian evangelist Franklin Graham, the son of world-renowned preacher Reverend Billy Graham. I don't know what's going to have to happen to this country, but my prayer is that America will wake up before that persecution happens. And we won't, Rexella. For Revelation 6, 9 and Revelation 24, Jews and Christians are really going to get it. And then going on here, the Muslim Brotherhood comes where? To the White House. Now let's see about the Muslim Brotherhood. The Egyptian president had something pretty powerful to say. Egyptian president, Muslim Brotherhood is the godfather of global terrorism. Now let's see their motto, if you will, please. The official motto of the Muslim Brotherhood is, Allah is our objective. The prophet is our leader. The Quran is our law. Dying in the way of Allah is our highest hope, as it promotes jihad or holy war. My, oh, my friends, that's very explicit, isn't it? And I want Jack to explain it. Jack, that says it all, doesn't it? Sure. They are behind the holy war. And jihad, they say, is what we want. We want to control the world. And they are the most barbarous groups in all the world. In a minute, we're going to show you that there are 49 of these murderous groups now, but most of them were started by this crowd, the Brotherhood, that sits in the White House. 14 of them and has great times with our president. And they are trying to keep the Christians from coming to see the president. What's going on in America? Now, I'll tell you what this General Assisi did. As soon as he became president, he put... Marcy, who was the new president, and in the Brotherhood Movement, the leader of it, in prison, and put in 400 of his followers, and they're still in prison. Now, get this, a sissy also said, there are 40,000 Muslim clergymen, Imans, you are not allowed to speak anymore 
in your mosques without my permission. You have to get your new license renewed. Wow, that's how much he mistrusts them, and yet our president can run with them. Let's go something now that is so dynamic, these charts, Rick Sell, and I'll sp explain each one as you put them up. Yes, I'm going to be putting on a chart the number of jihadist groups worldwide by the year. Hey, I'm going to start at 1988, and then I'm going to go up to 2013. Jack, there's a huge difference there. 25 19 years. Yes, From 19 3 to 49. You say, oh, but it's all ISIS. Baloney. They also have, as you know, Al-Qaeda, the Taliban, Hamas, Hezbollah, Boko Haram in Africa, al Sabab, and then they've got the Kibers over there in China using hatchets on everybody. That's only seven I've told you about. There are 49, and there's no end to the killing that they can accomplish when you see what just one ISIS is doing. Rex, let's move ahead. Yes, we're going to move ahead with something that might shock you very much. It did me. You know, sometimes you think about ISIS. They're the only ones persecuting, but they certainly are not. Take a look at this. Top 50 list of Christian persecutors in many, many countries there, Jack. Yes. Yes. And listen, not only are they there, but they are in 50 states now of America, and they have put up 100 names of military men and their addresses, how to find them, get them, and kill them because they fought in the war in Iraq against the Muslim. All right, I'm going to go to the locations of major militant Islamic groups right here in the United States. Whoa, what a shock that is, all the way from Seattle to Boca Raton, Florida. Oh, my, oh, my, New York and Michigan, Missouri, Texas, all of them in the middle of their locations. Oh, and Rexel, they got 55 no-go zones in Sweden. They have 100 in England, and they're afraid to go in those places because they might be killed. I'm talking about the police. England, 100, the no-go zones. And I just talked to my relatives in Belgium, said we're afraid to go downtown Brussels because of what's going on here. Afraid to go to Brussels. I can't believe it. It's all over Europe, too, friends, as well as here in the United States. Now, I showed you the locations of the militant groups in America. Let me show you their camps in America. And there they are, all the way from New York to California, Texas, Oklahoma, and Michigan and Colorado. Oh, Jack, this is ser they're training there, aren't they? Yes, and ISIS is already here in all 50 states to kill our military men. We better bring our boys home to defend the United States of America, the land we love. Now, is this all prophesied in Scripture in Luke 21, verse 9? He says, when you hear of wars and commotions, wars and revolutionaries, wars and terrorism, be not frightened. These things must first come before what? When they're happening, and they are. Then shall they see the Son of Man, Jesus, coming in a cloud with power and great glory. And when these things begin to happen, and they are, then look up. Your redemption draws nigh, and that's the redemption of the body. When he says, come up hither, and we go to meet him in the twinkling of an eye, 1 Corinthians 15, 52. And he ends with verses 31 and 32. This is our Jesus. He said, and what is happening, full blast, this terrorism. My kingdom is nigh at hand. I'm coming back to set up my kingdom forever. Oh, you know, Jack, you're ending on a very positive note here. So much bad news around the world, right, friends? But such good news in the Bible. It all points to the coming of the Lord, but we need to be ready. We need to have Jesus in our hearts. Have you opened your heart to the Lord? He is your Savior. He died for you. Will you accept him? As Jack prays this wonderful prayer, saying, Lord, I'm a sinner. Be my Savior. Jack. Jesus, my heart is burdened. Our nation's in trouble. Our lives are at risk. I'm not ready to meet you. Jesus, you died to save my soul, to save that soul eternally. And you will do it because you died on the cross, shedding your blood to cleanse me, a sinner. Jesus, I love what you did, and I love you, and I want you today to come into my heart and save me. I ask this in your holy name, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Jesus, 
the Savior of the world, the only way to heaven. Did you open your heart to him when you did? You pray that prayer, then you became a child of God. Please write and let me know. Uh, there's uh, my address. I'd love to send you this little book. First Steps in a New Direction. You're walking a new path with the Lord. And now, something we refer to very, very much on this program, the rapture generation. Are we the ones? Please take a look at the wonderful commercial. Could 2015 include the return of Christ? Date setting is never accurate. Fulfilled prophecy is. The four horsemen of the apocalypse are about to ride. Global devastation is on the horizon. But good news, soon millions will be evacuated, missing the 21 judgments taking place on Earth as we sweep through 187 trillion, billions of miles in the twinkling of an eye. Oh, what a ride as we whiz by Mars and numerous planets to reach God's throne in the third heaven. This event is about to happen. Jesus said when you see all the signs, you will know this momentous event is near, even at the door. To date, all 500 signs have been fulfilled, including the final two major signs only 21st century inhabitants have witnessed after 2,030 years. We are the generation that could experience the greatest flight ever, the rapture. Don't be left behind. Prepare to meet God. Order the rapture generation today. Yes, all the signs that we've been giving you on this program, many of them have been fulfilled already and they all point to the return of the Lord. And we put it all together on here. Even about natural disasters, that's a sign also. And about someone coming to be the Antichrist in here, so much more. The false prophet in here, you need to have this. And here's our announcer to tell you how you can receive it. Chuck? Thank you, Rex Eller, my friend, to order The Rapture Generation on DVD or VHS. Have your credit card ready and call toll-free 24 hours a day, 1-800-JVI-7777. To order by mail in the U.S., send your donation of $24.95 to Jack Vanapy Ministries, Box 7004, Troy, Michigan, 48007. In Canada, send your donation of $24.95 to Jack Vanapy Ministries of Canada, Box 1717, Postal Station A, Windsor, Ontario, NIA6Y1. Now back to Rexella. Friends, last week, please do not put it off. There's the 800 number, and there is the address. We will get this in the mail as soon as we hear from you. The Rapture Generation. I'd like to leave you with this good thought. I've used it before, but oh my, take it to your heart. Never give the devil a ride. He will always want to drive. How very, very true. He'll lead you in the wrong direction. We'll look forward to being your home again next week. And until then, remember, God cares for you. So do we so very much. Bye-bye. <laughs>